and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by. Leave us a comment. Leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. We here at Angry Me Production want to thank our sponsor, Mobile Notary Mindy. She's certified with the National Notary Association. She's also bonded and E&O insured. She offers a wide range of services, including wills, powers of attorney, medical documents, healthcare proxies, living wills, certification of trust, assignment of personal property, HIPAA waivers, advanced healthcare directives, and 99 verification. You can find her on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram at Mobile Notary Mindy. You can also visit her webpage at TexasMobileNotaryMindy.com. That's TX, MobileNotaryMindy.com. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Welcome, Angry Faithful. Today we have a special guest, Red Pill Threads. Tansy uh, from Failure Stop uh, had these guys' uh, products on. I ended up buying a product and losing the shirt. So, <laughs> and for what, from what I, I really, I, I'm still pissed off about that because I, I went through all my clothes trying to find it because I was like, I'm gonna wear the shirt. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be somewhat popular. He's gonna know this. And then I, I, I ended up losing the shirt. I play oh, yeah. where I placed it in a place where I should be able to find it. As soon as we're done with this. I'll, I'll probably end up like finding it like oh yeah it'll be right on top of the washer or something exactly but if you don't man let me know I'll send you another one I'll, I'll buy another one I'm no, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for like I'll, if if it's my mess up I'll, I'll pay for it it's no big deal I don't want anybody to you know back up my stupidity because I wait do it way too much <laughs> I keep on tell, I keep on telling people it's like I'm a genius but I do so much stupid shit that. <laughs> It pretty much negates it. it. Balances out. It balances everything out. Now, but, the reason, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show is because the one I got was just basic. It was basic, but like the one that you're wearing right now, yeah. the Kill List Crew. That artwork on that. Go ahead. Yes, that artwork is phenomenal. Thank you. Well, I appreciate yeah. it. And if you notice, if you know, I know it's hard to see in the reflection of the screen and everything, but there's a lot of fun little hidden hidden things in the shirt. Like you recognize yeah, the, what that the, is. Yeah. Or you know that word. Okay. Okay. Um, and there's all you know, there's sorts all sorts of symbols like this one hidden in there. Oh. So I put a lot of little hidden stuff. Little in, Easter eggs. In shirts like this, right. And you won't see them if you look at it on the website, unless you got really good vision. Because um, I want people to buy them and then, you know, actually look and pick up on this stuff and go, oh, shit, this dude kind of knows some things. And he's putting it out there, isn't he? So, yeah. <laughs> it would be, it'd be really funny. It's like one of the things is like a, a spell for like, you know, resurrecting somebody you just don't even know it. And he's like, yeah, Oops, I'm not that I'm smart. smart. I'd, I'd go to my wife on that no, one. You, you could do it by accident. I hope not. Christ. <laughs> um, really unless bad. we're resurrecting anybody that she has unalived. I'm that would I, that. that would I, you know, you know, but uh, no, I mean, I, I'll hold on real quick. Let me, I should have had this up. I didn't, like I said, I don't, I don't really. Don't worry, we all go through life unprepared. Yeah. yeah. I'm guilty. I'll, I'll just do it this way. 
But anyways, no. It, what what made you go to uh, like? I guess it's kind of a graffiti style, yeah, uh, art style. Um, what, what what wanted you to do that? It's one of many. Like I'm really trying to branch out and, and build on on my my Photoshop skills so that I can bring more uh, authentic and original designs. Like you, you know being a vet especially i know you you probably follow people like you know hodge twins and and stuff yeah. like that you know if you notice everybody's selling shirts and they all look the same it's all the same shit you know it's the lgbt thing but it's instead of the l is the you know, light beer and the b's beer and the g's gun t's whatever you know it's 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 all the same the statue of liberty holding an ar or uh yeah. you know let's go brandon and I mean, while that's all well and good, it, it, it has its place. There were no designs that really captured what I wanted to wear. So I kind of yeah, felt that there was a, a gap in the market. That, that's always the, the case. I mean, uh, let me bring this up. Real. That should have been on silent. Was your ringtone? Was that ABBA? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mother, I, I will <laughs> nerd destroy you <laughs> i thought it was the beginning of dancing queen i don't know maybe that speaks to me I won't, I won't. but what you what you got right here i mean you got one that uh it's it's very basic like a lot, yeah. of, a lot of people but you, then you got the one like the one that you're you're wearing right now it, it is it's so full of color it's just it, it's really artistic i mean you have a lot like even even the big stuff you got you can show like on the on the corners of the shoulders <clears throat> but like you said it probably has it has like a lot of easter eggs if you actually get the shirt by the shirt uh go to uh red thread uh red pill threads.com sorry i really bad with words sometimes but it, some of the i mean you got let me go back to this uh You can actually just scroll on that page if you want. Yeah, or yeah. whichever works. But they, they're all going to be on there. Yeah. You got Toller's Not Trans. You got NWA News uh, <laughs> News with Attitude. I couldn't not do that. It, it, once I heard the Tucker uh, and Cube interview, I was like, that's shirt. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, I just felt that like there was a place in the market for it. You know, I... I don't, yeah, I'm new to Photoshop. Uh, only been playing with it for a little bit. Um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a disgruntled IT administrator. You know, I worked in IT for about 15 years, uh, 10 of which were pretty much at the same company. Um, I was the only, it's a very small company. It was the only IT guy. Um, it was kind of my dream job. You know, it was in-house IT. I got to, when I came on board, um, the previous administrator was uh, basically saying, you know, everything needs upgrading. Everything needs to be redone. Okay. So I got to just build it from the ground up. And so, you know, I put a lot of time and effort into getting their network um, and getting everything up and running the way I wanted it, getting everything automated so that I just didn't have to do all the day to day stuff. And, um, kind of found my place, found my stride after about two years, you know, I got settled in, got them set up exactly how they wanted and just got pretty much everything I needed automated and made it so, you know, I could just remote in and do my work from home. Um, but that, you know, they didn't want that. They wanted me on site. Uh, and like I said, it's a very small company. It was only about 12 employees when I first started. Um, then uh, of course, just like with everybody, same story, everybody's got COVID hit and shit changed. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I guess for me, um, the so the owner uh, of the company and pretty much everybody else that worked there were older gay men, um, and you know don't have a problem working for gay dudes. They were all pretty pretty great, pretty you know fun to be around, funny dudes. One of whom I, I did have a big issue with. Um, you know, he would tell me he had problems with his laptop, and then it'd be gay porn when he'd bring it in. He'd have it already just loaded. Uh, just to, to mess with me, um, you know, but that was the only real issue I ever had with anybody there. But, um, you know, 
they were very left leaning. So when COVID hit, they all freaked out. Um, I thought it was a trip because we had the you know, two weeks where everything was supposed to be shut down. After the first week, he called the employees saying, you know, listen, I know this is what's going on and we're supposed to be all staying home, but I got a business to run. So can y'all come in? And, uh, you know, I said, I don't have to, you know, I set this up where I can, I can work remotely. So whatever you need done, I can do, but pretty much everybody else is like, no, we're, we're not coming in a week early. We're not doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I guess trying to be a good employee, I stepped up and said, you know, I'll, I'll handle what you need handled. I'm happy to come in. I'm not, I knew then that this was a bunch of bullshit and I wasn't, I, I wasn't falling for it. So, um, I think that I kind of stepped up a little too much. Um, we ended up losing four people cause they just didn't want to work. They didn't want to deal with it. Uh, then we, so we were down to eight and I'd say about a year into COVID two of the eight passed away, nothing to do with COVID one, um, was battling cancer and the other was having some serious heart issues. Um, and they passed away within a month of one another. So we were down to about six employees, one of whom was the owner, the other was HR and, uh, the other people kind of worked in the warehouse area. So that they put me front and center, you know, okay, well, if you did it, you're going to do customer service. You're going to do, you know, the, the other things like since COVID hit and nobody was having, well, let me give you a little context. I, the company did, uh, sold calligraphy and bookbinding supplies. And okay. uh, so calligraphy was really, you know, pretty popular, pretty great art form too. Um, stuff I never really knew much about until I started working there. But, um, you know, with COVID, no, none of the calligraphers could have their, they would travel and hold classes and it was very lucrative. And it worked out well for us because the teachers would send their students to us for their supplies. And, um, you know, COVID hit, so they, there were no longer in-person classes. And I had a lot of teachers kind of freaking out, like, what do we do? And my reply was exactly what we we're doing. I was like, do a Zoom class. You, know, you can charge a little bit less money. You do it from home. You're still making money. You're still sending people to us for supplies. And the more teachers that caught on to that, the more work I kind of created for myself. Because now I was the guy who had to create. Basically, you were doing a good job. You're doing a good job and you're kind of fucking yourself. I know how that well, and, you know, that wasn't even my job. You know, it just became yeah. my job. And and more and more things as people passed away or people decided they didn't want to work, more and more things just became my job. And uh I wasn't getting paid for it, I wasn't getting recognized for it. And um, so that went on for about that, you know, another year and a half. I complained, listen, y'all gotta get some more people in here. I can't do all this by myself. And it went on and on and you know, nothing changed. The, 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 the guy who owned the place was really happy with only having to pay me, you know, not an IT wage to do an IT job on top of a customer service job, on top of warehouse jobs, on top of all this other stuff. And so uh, it was not this past January, but the January before I called and just said, you know, I've been telling you for a year and you ain't got your shit together. So I'm out. I'm done. And, uh, about a week later, they called me freaking out like, yeah, we didn't realize how much you actually did. We want you to come back. And I said, no, uh, you know, I, I'm not interested. I've done everything I could do. And um, the only way I would consider helping you guys is if I took you all on as a client. So um, I'm happy why to. Why don't you why don't you uh, make a uh, company like that? Uh, did you do you have a yeah. company like that now? So that's what it turned into. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and they were my first client. You know, I told them, listen, I'm, I'm happy to take you on and handle all the networking, but my rate has changed dramatically. Um, it was pretty, probably six times what they were paying me. And, and, uh, so when I told them that I was really, I was trying to be an asshole and I was, ex I was highballing intentionally expecting them to go, nope, can't handle it. But I guess they were desperate. So they, I was there for another six months and that's kind of what started uh my consulting business so i you know, do network consulting but um it was yeah it was about six months longer that well not even six months probably about four months longer i stayed on only doing admin stuff for them and then they ended up selling the business because they he couldn't keep it running um so that was kind of a you know, i lost them as a client but it was a great pat on my back because i knew you know not to sound full of ego but 
I knew because I wasn't there anymore, he couldn't run it and he wasn't going to hire anybody because he was terrified of COVID. I mean, in, he did try. I'll give him that. He tried to interview some people, but in all the interviews, he was asking, he's trying to hire, you know, college age kids and pay them minimum wage to, you know, pack boxes. And he's interviewing them going, you know, do you go out to clubs and do you, do you uh, visit your family? And, do, and if they did, he wouldn't even take them in. So, you know, he's kind of cutting his nose off despite his face, but uh, it worked out well for me. I was able to have them as my first, uh, you know, uh, IT client uh, and uh, went on to build a few more, but noticed that as I was doing it, most of what I was doing was from home and I had a lot of spare time on my hands. So, you know, as I was uh, kind of trying to come to grips with that spare time and throughout my anger and angst of just everybody being frustrated with what's going on in the world, I posted a bunch of stuff just on Facebook, just angry quotes and this and that, and had a few people like, hey, man, these should be T-shirts. This is kind of kind of funny and it, and it, it captures the way I feel. So... I just started messing around with Photoshop, seeing what I could, what I could and couldn't do. And if I could make a vision come to life. And I told myself, if I can do 20 solid designs, I'll just go ahead and start a website and see what happens. And now I've got like 60 some odd designs. <laughs> um, so yeah, started in August. Uh, actually I launched the website on my birthday in August and uh, okay. been, been live since. And, you know, we're, uh, we're definitely not pulling in the dough. I mean, you know, we're, we're brand new, but, uh, I'm, I'm meeting a ton of amazing people. Uh, I'm, I'm getting in touch with people that I never really thought I'd even be speaking to. Um, and got in touch with King Bao, Joel Bauman, who's the guy who called out Jimmy Kimmel, uh, for being on the Epstein flight logs, called him out, uh, after a fight in the UFC, and that clip went viral and, then Bao pretty much just got canceled for it. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, got in touch with him and uh, that was, that was pretty awesome. You know, he told me that once he got canceled, he was doing something really similar. And uh, he, you know, it, it was kind of divine intervention that we found one another because he felt like I was kind of carrying the torch for him and doing what he couldn't do anymore. And um, so in talking with Bao, I got to learn about uh, his uh, nonprofit, which is Aloe Vea. Um, so if you remember that viral clip, he started with, I fight to eradicate childhood malnutrition from the planet. That was the beginning of that clip. Uh, and that's what he was speaking about. Aloe vera. It's, um, um, it's look it up. Aloe It's really interesting what they do. They just feed malnourished kids. And that's where my soft spot is. Um, so working, uh, I did my, just got set up with aloe vera so we could start donating to them. And also cutting a portion of our price eh, of our proceeds to uh, Operation Underground Railroad um, to uh, help in child sex trafficking because those the kids is where my line gets drawn. You don't you don't yeah. fuck with kids. And um, to to know that there are two really solid nonprofits out there, um, yeah, I felt like if I wasn't doing anything with them, you know, then I, it, that would make me part of the problem. If I'm not part of the solution, then I'm part of the problem. Yeah. So, uh, what's, just, the, uh, what's the name of that, uh, charity group again? Aloe Vea, A, uh, A L O V E A, Aloe Vea. So, yeah, I just got started with a business sponsorship with them last week. Um, and uh, I'm proud to be able to put that on on my website and on the social pages because, you know, again, like I said, if I'm not part of the solution, then I am part of the problem. And, and you know, unfortunately, I think that's how black and white the world has become. The gray area is really just it's starting to shrink, in my opinion. And um, yeah, well, it there's a lot of stuff that and I, you're going to have to message me on that one. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll link I'll link it to you. No problem. Yeah. Cause I like to check out that st kind of stuff too. Cause I, uh, a buddy of mine now, uh, Steven, I had him on the podcast. He, he, he was a Marine first division and we, he, he likes the conspiracy side that I, I do yeah. on, or, or I, I, I like to just say theories now because half the time they're coming true anyways. Yeah, so. I mean, we can just go ahead and call them spoiler alerts. 
Yes, we we could go spoiler alerts. I might I might just do that. Spoiler alert. This is might be happening. Yeah. Uh, but he he liked the uh, stuff, so I had I was like, hey, why don't you just come on the show and we can have a chat? So I had a chat. And he, uh, there's a new charity group that I'm going to talk talk to later on whenever you get a chance because uh, the guy's on vacation right now. But uh, it's uh, Seraphine, I think. Yeah, Seraphine. And they, they go after uh, the – they're trying to go after the child traff – or the human human traffickers. I, I wanna, if you say child traffickers, it just – it's just that one group. But there's a lot of human trafficking that yeah. I've just, – just doing research and everything. Tons of adult trafficking. Tons. I, it's, I couldn't believe I couldn't believe the stuff that they're doing in Africa, and w- what they're doing in Africa. Literally, it's baby factories. Yeah, absolutely. And I would, I mean, that's not just Africa, bro. That's here. Yeah, that's that, happening here. Yeah, it, that's it, happening it, in the United yeah. States, and it's uh, how something like that can operate under, uh, you know, under, you know, without getting discovered. I mean, one did just get busted uh, about a month ago. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's it's beyond me, and it's it's sickening. It's absolutely sickening, and yeah, um, it, it's a lot it, of where my anger comes from. Um, oh yeah, I, I can't I can't stand I can't stand that stuff. I the the worst worst case scenario on on, on me is uh, I had a I was babysitting like this baby, and I found out that the the mother and the boyfriend were like drug addicts to the point where I was taking care of the baby for like weeks. And I finally found I finally found the grandmother. Right. The grandmother uh was taking in her kids and we were setting it up for her to take this next uh child and I was like, "Hey, I got this new job. I'm constantly gone now. Can you you know, take care of the baby or, and I can't do it anymore. And this is like within like two months of me doing that, the, the boyfriend ended up, uh, hurting the child and I'll, I'll do the, the small amount hurting the child to the point to where the baby went to the hospital. And I came back when I came back, I heard this news and everything. And I literally held an 18 month old while the doctor was t- unplugging the, uh, uh, life support. And I, and then I've always had like an affiliation with kids to where not to say it's like wrong. It's just, I, I take care of kids. You, 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 someone says like, Hey, I got to go do this. I got to, uh, can you take care of my kid? Boom. Bring them in. Yeah. We'll play video games and munch on stuff. Yeah, exactly, man. I don't, I don't care. And that, that, that's how I was always brought up is, right. Hey, if someone needs help with kids, my, my mom always had me babysitting kids cause she wanted me, you know, interacting with kids and everything and make sure that I had the, uh, intelligence to take care of a child. Cause she, exactly. she was one of those moments like, I know you're 14 and everything, but you shouldn't, shouldn't you have like, uh, get me grandkids by now. I was like, <laughs> calm down, calm, calm down. down. Yeah, yeah. Take a couple of pills. I haven't even graduated. I haven't even gotten into high school yet. But m- my whole family, we've always done that. Even my dad, even my dad to this day, there's a lot of a lot of my actual personal friends that I co- consider brothers. They call him dad. Yeah. Only because they'll they'll just like my dad was in the Air Force and your dad raised me to be the man that I am today. And I'm like my dad's a shit bag. Are you <laughs> sure? But we had that rapport. Me and my You're dad. Talking about the same person. <laughs> yeah. Right. We, we, my 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 friend. My friend. I mean, one of them decided to marry my stepsister, so he can be part of the family, which was kind of weird. So. So he's he's he he's in the family now. But yeah, my dad just dropped off, and he 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 had a couple of magazines that he needed to. Pick up for his new uh, toy. How fun! Yeah, uh, yeah. That's actually, uh, you know, I, I do have some some. I, I don't want to say podcast. It wasn't even a podcast then. It was, uh, you know, Google Hangouts on YouTube like ten years ago. But uh, um, I was in the firearms industry for this was before IT. 
Um, I worked for an ammo manufacturer uh, here in North Carolina, and that afforded me a lot of uh, a lot of cool opportunities. Um, didn't pay that great, but I think we I went to Shot Show in 2013, 2012 or 2013, uh, which is a ton of fun. Um, you know, Shot Show itself, I mean, meh, whatever. There's some cool stuff. Okay, you know, the, the cry booth is always kind of impressive, and the cry party is always crazy. Um, What's a cry? Uh, it's a cry precision. It's a, a clothing combat clothing company. Um, oh, okay. They make eight hundred dollar pants. Oh fuck that! Whatever. It's it's dope stuff, but you know, I, 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 not not stuff I would pay for. Um, but uh, I got to work with a lot of great shooters. Um, got to work with some, you know, some locally. There was a company. Uh, that still trains there in Charlotte. Uh, they're called Solo Defense. Uh, I guess so I first got started with them because I got my concealed carry, and just you know, everybody gets the concealed carry, they take the class, and you know, then they tuck the gun wherever, and that's that. To me, that serves absolutely. You're, you're just you're learning how to play with a paperweight at that point. It makes no sense to me. Uh, if you're gonna buy a gun, you need to train, period, paragraph. So, uh, yeah. dove head first into training, um, started with Solo Defense. Solo started to grow pretty big and, and get, uh, get some good attention. Um, started doing Sims training, Sim munitions training with uh, a company called Sage Dynamics in Atlanta, uh, owned by a guy named Aaron Cowan, probably one of the most down to earth dudes, knowledgeable, uh, former DOJ, uh, went into uh, police work in Atlanta before he started training. And, um, as far as like real world scenarios go, he is the the guy to train under. He was just, you know, we would do a lot of Sims in um, this place called the Safety Wolf. It was a paintball house in Atlanta, and um, it was just big warehouse. So you had all different scenario opportunities. You know, did they change the uh, the the program? Well, when you're going through, so you didn't memorize the buildings and yes. everything. Yes, yeah, so there were. Well, the the building itself had so many different areas. It was three floors with elevators. It was kind of an empty warehouse on the top floor. The second floor was offices, all encompassing a, a conference room in the center. And then the first floor, like so, the design was all different. And um, the way he would set up scenarios, you know, he'd have good guy bad guy away from one another and he would tell good guy this is what's going on he'd tell bad guy this is what you do and nobody else would have a clue what was going on which made it as real as possible because that way when he called enroll you know people are panicking and running and screaming and you're having to you know make those decisions on the fly shoot no shoot what to do and you know it just it, it opened my eyes to a whole nother level uh, of training so um yeah. Yeah, it was tons of fun and just, I mean, it hurts a lot. You ever get shot by an AR uh, sim round at sub five feet? It's, it's going to mess you up. <laughs> I've played paintball before, sir. I oh, think man. I get the uh, pain tolerance of it. Paint, paintball is a, is a different, different it, animal. It is. I have, is mm. I have, I've, I've been hit by a sim round and I was like, ow. Yeah, not fun. Yeah, I caught an yeah. AR round in the, in, I don't know if you can oh. uh, see that gap in the tattoo right there. That's probably 10 years old. That was AR round at three feet. Um, <laughs> I was, I, I was diving at the time and caught the round when I shouldn't have. And uh, just, it was what it was. Uh, it was, uh, in, in fact, the lady who shot me uh, was there writing on behalf of breach bang clear. If you're familiar with them um, doing an article on Sage and their, their Sims training. And uh, you know, just tons of fun. I still train as much as possible. I don't get the opportunity to do Sims like I'd love to, but um, got a local range that I go shoot at, and I do carry. Um, you know, I do carry daily where I go, um, and uh, it's just the world we live in now. It's unfortunate. You know, I'm I'm out in the cut. I'm out in the country. I, I moved 28 minutes outside of the city, so I wouldn't have to deal with any of that stuff. But you know, not an area I'd worry about carrying around where yeah. I live. But you know, if I'm going to the grocery store, gas station, yeah, I'm, I'm carrying. I think I think when for for the people that don't understand is like reason why I well a person should carry a gun one 
I mean, look at what happened here in my neck of the woods. I live in Texas, and they just had that shooting down in uh, the state fair. Yeah. Uh, they only, I, they had, no, they got one. They haven't got the other one. It's crazy but, times, man. But I actually have the reason why I started carrying is I, I'm going back and forth to South Dakota to pick up my daughter. And I was hearing stories from a couple of cop friends that live in that area. And they were telling me, it's like, hey, uh, it, try to drive past Oklahoma City as fast as possible. I'm like, why? What's happening? Uh, one of our one of the deputies got shot. I was like, what happened? He, he was doing his due diligence. There was a branch that was in the road. And what the people did was is that was set up as a trap. So they would stop whoever pulled over and moved the branch out of the road. Right. They would pop. I'm like, are you serious? It's like, yeah. Yeah, and this is an off-duty deputy, sheriff's deputy. So they they probably didn't even know he was a, a deputy. No, they didn't know he was a deputy. It just it's just one of those things. And I'm like, it's the way it's always been the way of the world, but now it's publicized, and you got to be uh, forthgoing on that. And I, I agree with you, Will yeah. Hardy. If if you're gonna if you're gonna just because you carry doesn't mean you're 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 good enough to actually right. go out there and shoot. I, I try, uh, I train now more than ever only because got, I have a lot of time. I have this and I right. have, you know, boredom really. <laughs> and I've, I've found a couple of people that, uh, helped me out a lot. Uh, especially it's like, uh, I think she's going on like four years now. I met, uh, a friend of mine that was uh, SS. He was uh, Special Forces. Nice. And the, always he's, a good kind of friends to have. Well, he's a good guy, and I met him up at work, and we started hanging out at the range. And he's like, "Hey, you want to? You want me to show you some stuff?" It's like, okay. And we go back and forth. We'll do like, it was like, Hey, you need to do this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. And then, and then like what happened to you COVID hit me, something different happened to me. He, he got laid off at the same job that I was at. We, we, I eventually went back and he, he's still doing his own thing, but he had a, he, he's like, Hey, I got a security job. If you want in on it, it's 30, 30,000 for three months worth. It's like, all right, you got your passport. Yeah, let's get, do this. I was like, all right, I trained you enough, but let's nice go do that. this. I was in Haiti for three months. Oof. That's and, a tough spot. Oh, you have no idea. And you, my, you see I've stuff never been myself. My dad did some mission work in Haiti and lots of, lots of information when he came back. And uh, he said, don't go, don't go. Haiti now is worse because it is truly a failed state. They well, it's had, also uh, where we source a lot of the children that get trafficked. Yeah. Uh, Haiti's uh, a hot spot for that. But it, it's it, it's so sad that we there there's a lot of hot spots. That's one of them. Uh there's a Mexican town like right across the border. Uh no, it's like right next to El Paso, but that's another place too. That's a hot spot. Uh, but it's it, it's one of those things. Is once you see the environment, you you can get like news. That's the reason why I hate people that I was like, oh, this is this is happening in the world right now. I, I've seen it on the news. It's like, have you ever been in that area? Right. But no, I have. And I, I was talking to a guy that uh, he he never was in the military. He's he 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 was an oil field guy, and then he worked he he wanted something like really low key, so he worked at the factory that I work at. And so it, he's a really good guy. And me and him started talking. I was like, "Yeah, you know the stuff that's happening in Israel right now and Gaza and everything." And I was like. Yeah, it kind of sucks that that's happening. I was taking it. He was always like, but we got to support Israel. because I was like, listen, listen, it's not really black and white like that. That, that exactly. country is going 
no one owned that company uh, country for like thousands and thousands of years. You got to understand that it is literally the most uh, conquerable country in the world. It, 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 you can go back and just the Romans had it for a while. Egypt had it for a while. So everybody has like their finger put into this country. Mm hmm. And but now, you're... because of what's going on, you also see in a lot of this SJW attitude where they want to put their fingers in it too. And yeah, people don't know shit about shit. That you know, they they heard something on TV and went, "Oh, I got something else I can be upset about," and I'm going to go stand in the streets and scream with my friends. You know, yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, I, was, I was talking with them, and he's like. Well, what happens if we go to war? What happens if we go to war is there's people that are innocent that had no nothing to do with the stuff. I've, I've been I've been in war torn environments, and I really, really just I feel for the, like the businesses around them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're 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 fighting the good fight. If if you're a good person, you're a good person. You're fighting for your country, whatever. You know, that's your shit. That's your shit. But I've I've talked to er, er, people that were Palestinians, uh, people from Iran, a, every country that we've had like a dealing with. And when it comes around to, I've I've been in a mosque, and I talked to these people. It's like, hey, uh, I just uh, I missed your culture and everything. I wanted to visit a mosque again. Just just you know, talking with people, just. And they're all, you know, yeah, come in. Uh, just got to do your due diligence. Most of them that you have to wash your feet and everything. It's right. uh, it, it's part of their religious process. And good people, uh, and they'll tell you uh, up front, it was like, it's just the politics. Yeah. We don't care. We, yeah. we, the, the, the wholeness of our religion is to love each other. And if you're getting it from us, if you're getting it from a Baptist church, if you're getting it from a, you know, a what's the what's the Jewish one? Synagogue. synagogue. Yeah, there you go. Uh, syn if you're getting it from a synagogue, you're getting it from them. I've have I have lots of Jewish friends. I have lots of Christian friends. We all love each other. We are all do stuff for one another. We're part of the community. We help the community. Yeah, now that, the community that's what works. works. Anything beyond yeah. that is is it, just like you said. It's it's politics, and it's not, yeah. you know, it's not what affects their. Well, it does affect their daily lives, obviously, in situations like this. But you know, it's it, you're you're gonna go. You 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 can go to you know UCLA and pull a protester that doesn't know shit, but they're just standing there screaming because they think they should be, and take them to that mosque, and they're gonna argue with somebody there, going, "No, you should care." It's yeah, just, it's stupid. It's it's and that's, you know, that's that's kind of unfortunately where we are as a society. I mean, I think that, you know, the the everybody gets a trophy generation has grown up into what we're seeing now. And it's well, just the wrong it's, way. What I find funny is, is when I when I start like looking into uh, things in in. Like like the stuff that we're dealing with people n now is like oh the people that have participated nothing going against what you're saying, but if you look back it, it really distills to where uh we've always had this problem but we've always called it something else right right that that that's what what people don't understand it's like everybody going again was like oh we we need harsher gun loans I was like maybe we should like fix the main problem no 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 it's the guns the problems. You don't think mental health? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah. nobody wants to address the main issue because then that may actually fix something. And that, uh, if you actually fix something, then you start to, you know, you no longer have uh, th things to blame. The, the, the powers that be don't get to blame it on guns or blame it on the unvaccinated or blame, you know, they don't get that power anymore. And uh, that's, that's why it's never going to get fixed appropriately. Um, I mean, if we're too busy spending, sending millions of dollars a day to another country, but we can't focus that on our own and the people that actually need it, um, you know, and stop trying to play Team America World Police, 
maybe we'd actually get some work done. But that's, in my opinion, it's not going to happen until we burn it all down and start fresh. Yeah. Some, some, sometimes you, you look at that way and you're like, hey, I'd be kind of right on that. I'm not. That's just, I mean, that's my viewpoint. You know? I'm sure yeah. somebody will come along and poke holes in, in what I've got to say. And that's fine. I, that's what you were saying earlier about your friend, uh, you know, just being able to, um, engage in open discourse with somebody, whether you agree with them or not, as long as you can have that respectful civil discourse, both of you are going to learn something. Yeah, exactly. And Cause I have, I have, I have this, uh, theory where we've, we've really cut off, uh, speaking one-on-one -on -one. this is like absolutely more or less something that i like to do because i like to communicate but if i was in north carolina i would like hey come over to my place we'll do yeah. it here i'll fix you up something to eat and we'll have a you know heart-to-heart -heart conversation you might be like on the far far ephesus of what i want to talk about but we're going to have a good conversation. Yeah. That's what it is all about. Me, people won't, don't, they, they don't want to be wrong. Well, no, they get their feelings hurt too much. And, and they, even if they are wrong, yeah, they don't want to accept that they're wrong or they don't want to just stop. And I'm guilty of this too. I'm not preaching from some high horse. They don't want to just stop and see if they can find another perspective, see if they can listen to somebody else who may not agree with them or may, completely agree with them but coming from a different place and and i think that's really important and that's actually part of, also part of the reason that i started making the shirts that i do because i really want them to be a uh, kind of a, a conversation piece i mean i hate to call them like a coffee table book but you know if somebody can look at the kill this crew shirt and be like what, what's what's going on with that it might give me a chance to say, you know, hey, are you familiar with some of these things? Uh, you know, are you familiar with the amount of people that have been involved with the Clinton administration that have died in very curious ways? Um, you know, some of it's conjecture, some of it's true. And so if you can have the opportunity to, uh, and also why I named it Red Pill Threads, you know, just it's like in the Matrix. Once you take that pill, that's it. You're done. You have no other choice. So that, that, I'm hoping that, that the shirts can just kind of, if I can, and it's not me, but if somebody bought one of my shirts and is wearing it in a public setting and someone had a question about it, I would just pray that that's an opportunity for the open discourse between the two people that we're talking about. And maybe both of those people will step away from the conversation having learned something, but maybe just maybe the person will, you know, is asking about the shirt and has no clue about, you know, I've got a shirt uh, that I made. It's, it's a trash can. Sorry. It's not the, <laughs> doesn't sound amazing, but it's a trash can from uh, the, the pictures from uh, downtown Hollywood. And it's, you know, it says Hollywood entertainment district. And I just erased Holly and wrote pedo. Yeah. Cause in my, the way I see it is you know, that shirt represents pedo wood trash. And it just makes sense to me. I was wearing it at the farmer's market with my wife the other day and a guy just kind of go like i could see his eyes darting from my eyes to my shirt and he goes where'd you get that and i said i made it that's my that's the shirt company i own and he goes so you think everybody in hollywood's a bunch of pedophiles and i said it may not be every single person but yeah I've, I, with the names that i've read on the flight logs yeah i do and it opened up a conversation that I wasn't expecting to have. He learned a little bit. I learned a little bit. And maybe I opened his eyes just a little bit. And once you open somebody's eyes, once those eyes start to open a little bit, it's really hard for them to close them again. So that's kind of where I felt I would play a, a good role in kind of starting to open those eyes a little bit. And, you know, once one eye's open, another one gets open. It's like dominoes. When those dominoes start to fall, you know, it just builds a bigger army, so to speak. You know, that's that's kind of what I see, what we are. Because um, uh, you know, not to be cheesy and use the, uh, you may know the song from a few years ago by High Res and, and Jimmy Levy, uh, This is a War uh, is the name of the song. This is a war on a religion. This is a war on the children. Uh, they give you the cure for the with the sickness, 
this is a war on tradition are the first uh, few lyrics of that song. And that's really the way I look at it because um, unfortunately, you know, it's us, the majority who are just being disenfranchised and pushed to the side. Uh, the, this whole goal is that divide and conquer. Let's get everybody mad about racism again. I don't remember that being an issue 20 years ago. When I was in grade school, it wasn't a problem. And I went to a relatively mixed mm -hmm. grade school and yeah. nobody had issues with one another. Nobody was dropping in bombs at one another. Nobody, it didn't exist. But now all of a sudden it's a problem again. I mean, to me, that's by design, you know, that's by design. And uh, yeah, it, it's one of those, things, it's one of those things that media wants, they want to create a fear. Absolutely. To where Absolutely. they they're reveling again. Because exactly. right now, and and I I saw like the writing on the walls like a long time ago, and this is like before podcasts, just like you know blobs, uh, blogs, where blogs. yeah, a lot of they were getting their own narrative, and and then I started researching how how they're getting journalism, journalists on like major pu uh, publications like the New York Times and uh, Washington Post, uh, uh, Dallas Times, you know, all, all those. And they were getting it from, uh, they were getting, they were basically sourcing it to people that, you know, they could pay small amount of money, but still get somebody to write these articles. And it wasn't until I read this one article, I think. That's our, for, that's our Soros funded media for you. Well, what got me was they they trapped me with the the headlines. The headlines I, I took a small amount of journalism, and the headlines are supposed to grab you to the point where you want to read the article. Right. And right. now we call it clickbait. Yeah. But that's it, what it was it, back then. Yeah, it it, then. yeah. We just now have a word, a newer word for it. Like like I always like to say, it's like they just want to have newer words for stuff. Right. And. And I already knew that. I was like, okay, this article is supposed to say this. And it, I read this one article. The first thing that the person, when they were writing this, it, it was should have been just all facts. It was something like everybody should have known anyways. But the, the reason why I stopped reading it was the fact that this person said, it's like, hey, I am a Libra, and these are the opinions that I believe to be part of these facts. As soon as I read that, I was like, "Time to go to the new source." Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't go. I, I. I don't. I don't know how. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't put their pronouns in there too. Well, this is before the whole pronoun oh. thing. This is like in uh, 2010. Okay. So we didn't have the pronouns uh, embedded in yet. Uh, I was. I. I. I, I try. I. It, it stopped me there because I don't know when astrology was supposed to be a fact facto of uh, stuff that's going to happen in right. the world, and and this is literally like it was uh, it was it was something like so far gone I haven't uh, to remember the art I can't even remember the full. If you've like, got a Nostradamus complex, you don't need to be writing news articles. Exactly, and. <laughs> That's where they're getting their uh, be, because it is cheap. Uh, a lot of the uh, and these are like big name news thing sources and everything. They're supposed to have like the best of the best, and they they don't have the best of the best anymore. Yeah, and no, people right. are wondering a, why things minimum track. for you know bottom dollar for a story that you can sell for a whole lot more. No, it's just it's all about it's all about that number. It's, a, it's all yeah. About if I pay. If I pay you two bucks to write me an article about how uh, uh, brownies are the best brownies in the world, and you do that, and I sell it for one hundred and forty thousand yeah. dollars, we'll let's go ridiculous numbers. Yeah. Then I'm I'm good. I don't care. I mean, I understand it's a business, and that's what they are. They're running as a business, and now we're actually able to see this shit. Yeah, absolutely. And um, 
yeah, unfortunately, fear is what controls and fear is what sells. And um, that old narrative drives drives consumption. If it if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. So, you know, with that kind of uh, mentality in the news organizations, you know, it's no wonder everybody's just wiping their ass with the New York Times at this point. You know, I I uh, it, it's. It's, a, it's really unfortunate because you you do lose, um, you know, especially like my, my stepdad uh, was a Marine. He was a drill sergeant at Paris Island. Um, okay. you know, he was uh, a rowdy dude, right? And um, he is so deeply entrenched in mainstream news. I know if CNN says it, it is law. And um you know, being a marine and having his background i really expected his political opinions to be different than what they are but uh especially when covid came in you know i'm hitting him with information that i'm learning like you know just hit it uh i think it was two mid 2002 or i'm sorry mid 2022 um where vayers had started to release their uh information on the effects of the vaccine and the result, the resulting uh, effects in myocarditis, what it, what actually started, you know, inflammation of the heart. Uh, I'm showing him VAERS and he's just like, no, that's a lie. That's bullshit. And I'm like, how is it a lie? And this is the, this is, this is the company that has made their stake in being a, uh, a vaccine, anybody, they report on any and every vaccine. I mean, this, this has become the, the standard and you're going, you're telling me it's a lie because CNN says so. And he, he would never be able to hold weight in an argument. Um, do you remember maybe a year or two ago, the, it's probably about a year ago. Um, you kind of see it on social media. It was, uh, it was an ad that showed Russian military training versus American military training. Okay. Uh, do you remember that? It was, you know, just showing these Russians as being these bad motherfuckers who, you know, they're training hard, da da da. And then it cut to American military training. And it's like, I would storm the beach, but I have a shellfish allergy. And, you know, it, it was just, it just made me laugh. Um, you know, not to say that that's an accurate reflection on what's going on in the American military today, but it was just such a, a juxtaposition. And I showed it to him and he was so furious. He was, hey, don't bring that shit around me. And I really was kind of showing it to him in jest, you know, just to, you know, yeah. I thought it was funny, thought he'd get a kick out of it. He was so angry. And mm -hmm. it just, it, it astonishes me how deep the old version of the mainstream media has their teeth in some of the older generations. And that they, will not let go of some of this stuff. And they are just holding it as law. You know, whatever MSNBC says is law. doesn't matter if Rachel Maddow comes on state, uh, comes on screen and tells you that every single COVID molecule is going to be stopped by this vaccine. And then two months later, they're like, yeah, yeah. We, what's up with everybody uh, getting vaccinated and still getting COVID? And she's like, oh yeah, I never said that. It's not, no, no there's no accountability. You know, they're allowed to say whatever they want. It's, and, it, and the people are so deeply entrenched in it that when you, you know, you've got a show like uh, Redacted where, you know, I love what they do. And, um, you know, they're sitting there, they're, they're breaking apart all these news stories that are getting redacted and you know, not getting the front page that they should be getting on. Listen, these guys reported something and it is wrong. Like Rachel Maddow came and started saying all this stuff and it is absolutely not true. So they're redacting it on this page and it's this little small print. You, I would go and show him something like that. And he's like, no, that's still bullshit. Whatever MSNBC says is law. And it, it's sad, but you know, hope, I, I see that there's hope. I see that there's, um, you know, in connecting with the people I've started to connect with recently, it, it made me realize that we are not the few. We absolutely are the many. Yeah. I had uh, the, the problem that I, I constantly have uh, in the beginning is I found a lot of the documentation, like, like the, uh, the, the vaccine. 
the vaccine, I, I I had like a full document. The the bad thing is, is I didn't take screenshots of it of what the vo- uh, vaccine was, and I was like, oh, I'm not getting the vaccine. I don't need like uh, something that gives my immune uh, system a boost. Right. My, my immune system is perfectly fine. I already understand that. Now the fact that I smoke and it's kind of a bad thing that's might hurt you me, but I'm not going to get a vaccine. And and then I I was like, oh, dude. X, Y, and Z is going to happen. The, the, the inflation of the heart because of the uh, white cells. It, it was something to do with the uh, white blood cells being uh, uh, it, the only thing I can come up with was like stretched. Yeah, they, they were, the, the white blood, blood cells were inflamed and it was causing problems with the heart and that's what you have this boiling in the heart. And I had all this documentation and it was just instead of like screenshotting th- thinking oh it'll be up there next week yeah that should be gone suppressed day yeah they shut that's it down pretty- that's why i made the shirt that says denormalize adolescent myocarditis that's you know, some of my shirts are very graphic like this some of them are just a statement and i think yeah. that's an important statement because when you've got 12 year olds and 17 year olds who are having heart attacks in the middle of football practice and everybody's going well i don't know what could have caused that yeah. Um, I don't know. Take a look around. Yeah, you know, what what's the new thing that you've introduced into this this age group? So what could be causing that? Yeah. Um, so the fact that I even have to make a shirt like that is upsetting to me. But you know, I'm pissed off and I got a statement to make and, and I know people agree. So, you know, maybe it'll like we were saying earlier, maybe it's gonna you know cause people to have a, a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah, but going back on uh, a lot of the people that are like the older generations, I mean, you know, I've been reteaching my dad how to, you know, follow up with like decisions because of X, Y, and Z, right? Because the news media is more of a business now, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a failing yeah. business at that. A failing oh, yeah, business. Hey, it's hey, fantastic. It, it's pretty bad that you're getting like good medical advice from a podcast that the person's not even a doctor. Yeah. And yeah, then, well, I mean, the, 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 the way I've discovered, uh, and I, and I think this is probably common sense at this point, but if, if you want to find out who to listen to, you start finding out who they're silencing. Yeah. That's who you listen to. I mean, you've got people like Dr. Peter McCullough. Um, you know, he was one of the first to be shut down. Uh, as far as uh, coming up, coming forward with America's frontline doctors and coming speaking out against the vaccine, but then you had uh, Dr. Richard Malone, the inventor of the PCR test, the person who invented the test that they use for COVID, coming out and going, "This is not what I invented this for, and this is absolutely not effective. This is this is all pseudoscience bullshit." And the first thing they do, Malone, you're shut down. You're out of here. So, you know, that's that's kind of where I look if um, if it's a it's a well-known doctor who is getting silenced. He's probably the doctor that I want to listen to. Yeah. And what it with the what, what I've been uh, saying about the older generation there, they got their news and it was actually credible. Yeah. And now we're getting our yeah, news. It was, yeah. And it's and it's not really that credible. I mean, when you have to fact check what which is a new term now. But if you if you do the research on the stuff going in, and you start looking at it, and you're like, oh, it's just total bullshit. I had a I had a guy that uh, uh, it was during that time frame where Georgia, uh, because we have a sports show, we have to go with like uh, the All Stars games was switched from Georgia to uh, Colorado because Georgia enacted a uh, ID check for voters. And uh, the friend of mine, he he was like, oh, man, this is racism. I was like, how is it racism? He's like, well, because, I mean, he was literally saying more racist stuff. Yeah. And I was coming back. I was like, I mean, you have to, to, to drive. You have to have an ID, right? He was like, yeah. So you're saying they, they – well, they can't buy motor vehicles. They, they – uh, I, I was I was stunned of all the stupid stuff that he was saying that was obviously racism. And it's, and it's I was telling him, I was like, dude, that's racist. And he's probably just regurgitating what he heard. 
Exactly. And it's it, and when people do, it's the, what you're saying about fact checkers. Like we're told during this whole thing, don't do your own research. Don't think for yourself. Don't worry. We have fact checkers. We have people that do that for you. Uh, sorry, buddy. I'm going to think I'm going I'm to let them sit this one out. I'll do my own research. Thanks. And, and to come to find out that they, their fact check weren't even fact checks yeah, in the yeah. play. They were right. just going. And in our opinion, this is inaccurate because whatever. And yeah, just, they, well, we're going to press this button and we're going to let the uh, stuff just run down to what we're thinking. I love, love, if I see a post that says warning and tells me about the fact check, I'm definitely going to read the post and I'm definitely going to read the fact check to see what kind of bullshit opinion they have. And nine times out of 10, you know, they're, they're telling you that the post is inaccurate because of the smallest detail that is absolutely nothing to do with what that post is trying to say. So they're going to take any opportunity they can to fact check it and to be able to put that warning up there and tell you, you know, whatever page you're going to has been putting out false information um, just because they can. And in the, you know, in the whole time, you know, I can't really come up with a great example off the top of my head, but you know, the whole time. I have a great example. Sure. This is, this is so hilarious. It just, uh, my brain just actually started working. There is there is a uh a, I guess you could go meme. Uh it was a meme of glasses showing a flower. And, and the, the perspective is uh if you look at it through like you know magnifying glass, the flower looks bigger. Right. But if you look at it a different way, it looks really small. But still believe in yourself. That was it. That was all that was the only statement was to believe in yourself. And it was uh, sensitive material. Yeah. yeah I, I was like, this is bullshit. This is not sensitive material. I'll put it up and it'll, yeah, I won't get a ding. I got a ding. Yeah. And, it, and, and I was like, how? And I, 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 I went my due diligence and, and I sent and I requested, you know, uh, a talk with the, the organization. A trip. I mean, you can't get in any kind of good, good information on anybody anymore because uh everything is automated but i called facebook i was like yeah. hey uh i have a question on a photo that is being uh wow. and flagged and i was like i'm i'm i'm, I'm a reporter for x y and z these are my credentials well, i'm not a reporter i just right. yeah. you know if you can if you can bullshit it your way up to the top you can keep it going exactly fake it till you make it yeah, get a ladder, you can go anywhere. But I ended up t talking to somebody. I was like, why is this being flagged? It doesn't show any, you know, uh, nudity, graphic. It's just a flower with a... Uh, uh, Changing flag. perspective, yeah. Yeah, it's changing perspective. I, it's the algorithm. We're sorry. I'm like, yeah, yeah but... Why is your algorithm flagging this? What is the purpose of? I mean, the only thing that I could perceive it being bad is believing yourself. Yeah, well, we're not believing ourselves anymore. We're supposed yeah, to. Like, I mean, yeah, we're not supposed to believe in ourselves. We're not supposed to do our own research. We're not supposed to be educated. Um, you know, when when Rockefeller took over the uh, education system in in the forties, I mean, what did he say? I want a nation of workers, not thinkers. Wasn't that it? Yes, and um, I, mean, at, I, I did a I did a psychos and sociopaths episode of Lulao. I think it's the city's called, uh, but it's a, a city in Colorado. A friend of mine show, uh, told me this. He's like, "Hey, you should do a, a episode about this." It was a massacre there. I was like, "Okay, I'm, I'm interested. I like massacres, <laughs> like the best of them." I, I, I read it. It was coal mining what they're doing and and the rock pharaohs own the uh rights to the uh, coal mining and because of that massacre and this is the united states army uh well national guard you can't really say that much val but what got me was uh this 
the son, it was the son that was doing the business practices at the time. And uh, someone asked him, it's like, would you do it? Would you do the massacre again? If you, uh, if you, it's like, yeah, I would do it again. It got people to uh, do what we want. And, and this is where we actually got eight hour work weeks or eight hour days, wow. 40 hour work weeks. This is the preamble of all that stuff that we get now. And, we, and a lot of people take grant, uh, for granted. And and I'm like, it took a freaking massacre, almost committing genocide, which genocide is a whole new topic on that because the word actually became uh, prevalent because of uh, the Armenian genocide. They had to create a word to show what they did was right. bad. But that's that's how. Uh, You have good people on top that treat their workers good. And you have people that just, they just want everything to follow suit. And that's what, man, we could go on a tangent for hours and hours and hours on looking at all the bad stuff and everything. Oh, of course. But we'll, 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 we'll cut it up. We, we, we've already done an hour. I am. I'm good to go if you are, buddy. Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut it. Uh, check out his T-shirt line, Red Pill Threads, and uh, God, I hope your business goes up. I mean, you got a lot of Appreciate good ideas it. and everything and good designs, and, and if you take it from nothing, the, the artwork is phenomenal also. I really, That means a lot to me. You know, this is yeah. – uh, I was um, – and not to, to – you know, if, if we're going to cut it, I don't want to keep going. Keep going. It's okay. Well, I mean – it means a lot to, to hear that because I've always wanted to be an artistic person. Um, you know, I grew up very like I was drawing all the time. I was painting. I was always doing something uh, until about eight when Ritalin was invented. And uh, my mom Same. being a teacher was like, fuck, yeah, this is a miracle drug. He needs this stuff. And that uh, that was forced down my throat f until I was about 17. And yeah, uh, it thing. crushed my spirit. You know, I, I was, I was in and out of the hospital. I was a pretty sick kid because of it. I was, and the doctors didn't bother to go, Oh, he's been on meth. This is why he's so fucked up. Um, it was, Oh, well he's got mono or he's got a nutrient deficiency. Well, yeah, I had a nutrient deficiency because I wasn't eating because I was on meth. Yeah. You know? Um, so, uh, all of that just got crushed. It got suppressed. And by the time I was, you know, 16, 17, and was like, I'm not playing this game anymore. Well, you know, I was graduating high school, going into college, and uh, it just never, I never had the chance to be creative, to be any of that. I didn't get to, to feed that monster. And um, then, you know, got into the workforce, got busy with that, ended up having a kid, um, and just I let it get away from me. So, you know, being, um, you know, just starting that consulting company and, and being able to, to do what I really like doing, but having more free time just has afforded me the opportunity to be creative again. And it's kind of like rediscovering myself, you know, and I, I'm, I'm finding that I'm capable of doing things that I didn't really think I was capable of doing. And so that, you know, the compliment is very, very well received. It really does mean a lot because I'm just doing, I'm like, okay, well, I think that looks cool. And, you know, I can think it looks cool all day, but to, to have the other validation for, from, from people like you and from the other people that are telling me like, dude, you got great designs. It just, it's, I'm trying not to get a big head about it. Cause it, it's just like, wow, what I'm doing is. Don't get, don't is get awesome. like, Picasso, don't get like Picasso and trying to buy stuff with like, <laughs> it's like, I, I, I made this drawing. This is, <laughs> that didn't no, really you know. I've just got all these, I get all these ideas. Like uh, when, when Hillary Clinton came back out saying that all these right wing extremists needed to go back to re-education camps, like instantly I was like, that's a shirt idea. And I wanted yeah. to do, you know, something kind of, uh, uh, a distant shot of something that would look like an Auschwitz kind of situation with okay. the banner over the top of, uh, the gates would read, Clinton Foundation re-education camp and everybody inside would have like MAGA hats on and be like looking all twitchy and, and stuff like that. I just got all these great ideas. Of course, I haven't been able to 
to, to start designing that one yet. And of course, you know, those types of things are so fleeting that the design itself is not going to be as funny, you know, six months from now. So yeah, I got to kind of pick and choose my battles. You know, I'd rather design yeah, something that's I, a little I, I bit more that. timeless. Like, you know, this is never going to go anywhere. You know? Yeah. These, no, these, no, no, no. I, 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 I totally get that. I, uh, I kept on having to tell a lot of my, uh, Cause we're we're slow on the whole, you know, trying to make money on this. I I enjoy it. I don't. I put a little bit of money into it, but you know, I have fun because I get to talk to like people like you yeah, and hobbies. Yeah, yeah. I, I I love you know having good good storytelling. Yeah, that, that's what it all. I I love storytellings, and that's I mean one I get you know. uh better in, not information but able to speak in public i used to not be able to do i had a speech class and i couldn't do it it's tough dude ask anybody to come on and, and and do a podcast whether you're in front of five people or 500 it's tough yeah you you did you you even said it yourself he's like i don't know if i'm gonna be and it's, i was like dude as soon as you get on we're just gonna have a good chat that's yeah. it and but that's what it's all about you know yeah being able to you know, yeah, you're working on your dictation and your public speaking, but at the same time, you're able to have a conversation, maybe gain a perspective you you weren't really thinking about, gather some information on something you weren't too aware of, or be able to to, to share that information with somebody that that may not be as uh, as up to date. And it's, you know, if if people are able to do this more often, you know, hopefully you're going to start seeing a lot of this insignificant squabbly bullshit get squashed a lot faster. Um, you know, because you're the, the, the immediate reaction to just argue because I don't agree I mean, that that's not a good look for a lot of people. And I mean, yeah, they'll hold on to that. Uh, but you know, once that civil discourse opens, uh, you're going to learn something, no matter what, you're going to learn something. So, you know, if I've got to give a message to anybody, it's don't be an asshole, listen and, you know, uh, don't project your own feelings onto somebody just because they don't agree with you. You know, take what they have to say with a grain of salt, but engage in that conversation because you will learn something. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. Goodbye. Thanks for having. <laughs> thank you.